flowers really quite easy. You need to get rid of all the green leaves. You can just break them off like so. Now I have a wormery and a couple of compost heaps so the leaves don't go to waste they just go into the wormery to feed the worms which in turn make lovely compost for the garden and also the compost heap takes any overflow so try and waste as little food items as possible in the kitchen so we're nearly there and you just want to cut the florets off so I'm just putting the knife down around the stalk and just going round circling the stalk to release the florets nearly there so we don't need the leaves and we want florets about that size now all you have to do is cut through and it's approximate you don't have to be really precise with this sometimes it's natural as to where the florets are and they come off at the about the right size and other times you just like this one's a little bit too big just cut straight through and there you go around about that size so just go through the whole cauliflower you can even pick them off if they pick off nice and easily doesn't take too long quite an easy job I'll just cut this one in half variety of sizes makes the dish just a bit better, looks a bit better, keeps the cauliflower in nice chunks so when you actually go to eat it you've got a nice chunk of cauliflower. So just pop up the little bits and then what you want to do is fill up your pan with water so it covers the cauliflower a little bit of salt just using standard table salt around about a teaspoon will do and pop that onto the cooker and the water's cold which gives the cauliflower a nice sort of gentle warm and cook without breaking the cauliflower. You want to cook it so it's slightly firm but not overcooked. You don't want soggy cauliflower to go into a cauliflower cheese because the whole dish will end up as mush, not particularly nice. So if you warm up the water in the pan and then bring it up to a boil, simmer, maybe five minutes depending on how much cauliflower when it's been on about five minutes get a knife and just test the cauliflower and make sure that there is some softness to it so a kind of an al dente is all you need making a cheese sauce is really easy don't be frightened to give it a go you will need some salt and pepper i've got approximately a teaspoon a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg, 40 grams of unsalted butter, 40 grams of plain flour, 400 mils of whole milk, some Coleman's English mustard, one of my favourites, nice tang to that one, teaspoon of that, and then 120 grams of mature cheddar cheese. And you'll need a saucepan, and a sturdy spoon, so a wooden spoon is ideal for this and I'll show you why you need a sturdy spoon as opposed to a spatula when we cook it. Get your cauliflower on and whilst that's cooking weigh out all your ingredients for the cheese sauce 
and then start making the cheese sauce. By the time you've made your cheese sauce, the cauliflower will be ready. So it's good time management in the kitchen. So let's go over to the cooker. I cook the cauliflower and the knife goes in and it's a little bit soft but there's some firmness there. So I've just drained the cauliflower and put it in a colander and that can drain off any excess water. So we can leave that at the back of the ring whilst we cook the cauliflower cheese sauce and you may want to pop your oven on. Using a solid based, nice and solid based saucepan, I'm going to put the ring on and we're starting off with the butter. Now I've chopped up the butter into small cubes because that makes it easier and faster to melt so that saves time. When you're cooking with butter you want to be sure not to burn it so it's always worth keeping a very watchful eye on butter because the second you turn your back it will start to burn. Once the butter's melted we're going to add in the flour. Pop it all in. And then this is where you need to start stirring the flour into the butter and it's going to make a paste and this is called a roux, this is one of the basics of a lot of different sauces and we need to just cook this paste for about a minute or two, you don't want to cook it so it changes colour but we're cooking it so the flour in there cooks a little bit so we can fully absorb all the milk that we're going to put in there shortly. I generally keep moving it around the pan just to make sure it doesn't burn. Having a wooden spoon makes it really easy to mix in the flour and then when we add the liquid, the milk, it will make it really easy to combine the milk and the flour to make the sauce. If you use a silicone spatula I just find that it doesn't mix as efficiently. I'm just going to cook that a little bit longer and you want the heat on a medium heat for this part of cooking the sauce. I'd say that's about ready now. So we're going to slowly, a little bit at a time, add the milk. And I'm going to take it off the heat by just picking up the pan to do this. You can see straight away the milk is absorbed by the flour and butter. If you add a little bit at a time and stir, it's going to be less lumpy. If you add all the milk in in one go, it will be a horrible job trying to get the flour and the milk combined. So you can see the paste is getting bigger at this point. I'm just going to turn the cooker off. Add a little bit more milk and you just repeat this process until all the milk is used up. This is where you need a little bit of patience and a little bit of elbow grease. Time to add the milk. As the paste is incorporated just add a little bit more milk and as you increase the amount of milk that you add then you can add a little bit more each time. So you start off with tiny amounts of milk and then slowly you can put a little bit more milk in. But stir, 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 make sure that you get any lumps out because lumpy anything is really not very nice to eat. If you take your time at this point, you'll make lovely non-lumpy cheese sauce. Squidgy sounds.
see the sauce is beginning to develop now. Time for a little more milk. Can add a little bit more in quantity each time though. And carefully stir. This is the hardest part of making a cauliflower cheese and with a little bit of practice stirring is uh, to get all the lumps out you should pick this one up really quite quickly it's quite a good basic to know and then once you can make a cheese sauce you can start making all sorts of other sauces there we go starting to come together and as you can see all the lumps are working their way out. If you have a lump just get the back of the spatula against the edge of the saucepan and just press gently and that will just get rid of any lumps. If you find it's lumpy at this stage keep stirring, don't add any more milk because it will just make the job of dispersing the lumps even harder. Time for more milk. And if you get really stuck with this, you can always use a blender, a stick blender at this point to get any lumps out. Now you've got some liquid in there. So if it does go a little bit lumpy, don't worry, stick blender or once you've added all the milk, if it's really, really bad, then you can actually sieve it. But try and get this right. Spend the little bit of time right at the beginning, just adding tiny bits of milk at a time to combine it. It's really quite loose, so I can actually pop the rest of the milk in in one go. nice thin sauce. Now it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. So we have our nutmeg, salt and pepper, and then I put a teaspoon in but whatever your taste on mustard, some people find mustard incredibly hot. Uh, this is hot mustard but once it's been combined in a cheese sauce it does actually lose some of the heat so I do find that you can add a little bit more than you might imagine. So give that a stir. And then we want to add three quarters of our cheese. We're going to reserve some of the cheese to actually go on the top of the cauliflower cheese dish to bake and crisp up on the top when it goes in the oven. So I'm going to leave it about there. We're going to put the heat back on. So on medium heat again, we're going to stir until the cheese is all melted. And then once the cheese melts, the sauce will start to thicken. It's important when you're making a cheese sauce to weigh your ingredients because this is where a cheese sauce can go wrong. The wrong amounts of flour and fats and milk and you can actually make a sauce curdle. So again, spend the time, weigh out your ingredients first and then just take it slowly to start off with and then you'll have a perfect cheese sauce. You need to keep stirring and make sure that the sauce doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. If it starts to stick, it will burn your sauce. And I've done that before and it's really quite horrible. If the sauce does start to burn, what you need to do is literally just take it off the stove and tip it 
into another pan without disturbing the bottom and that way you can save the day. Sauce is beginning to heat up, I can feel the consistency is starting to thicken and the cheese is starting to melt. And lots of recipes will give you a time for how long it takes to thicken the sauce. But everybody's size of saucepans are different, everybody's cooker tops are different. So just go by the thickness. This is quite runny, this is not ready yet. The sauce will thicken up and when it starts to thicken up it will do so really quickly. So again, really important to keep stirring. Sauce is starting to thicken and it will thicken really quite fast at this stage. Keep stirring and then when you get it to a lovely thick consistency turn the heat off, take the pan off the heat and then you're ready to assemble your cauliflower cheese. We're nearly there. And I'd say that's about the consistency you need for cauliflower cheese. Quite thick, you can drizzle a pattern on the top and we're done. To assemble the cauliflower cheese we're going to get the cauliflower which we cooked earlier and that's been draining nicely while we made the cheese sauce. We just tip that into an oven proof dish and then just arrange the cauliflower so it's spread evenly across the bottom of the dish like so. Then we get our cheese. If it's been resting just a couple of minutes you'll see a skin start to form on the top don't worry about that stir in everything give it a good stir got a little monty dog very excited he gets very excited with anything to do with cheese and who can blame him cheese is delicious so just stir in the skin and then we're just going to pour the cheese sauce all over the cauliflower. This is the time for your flexible spatula because you can get every last scrummy drop of cheese out of the pan and that's good. Why waste perfectly good cheese sauce? And then just paddle the sauce A little bit over the cauliflower if you haven't managed to cover it all. And try not to get any sauce on the edge of the dish because that will burn and you don't want to have burnt cheese on the side of the dish because it's really hard to get off when you're washing up. Sprinkle the remainder of the grated mature cheddar cheese over the top. You can use any cheese. Cheddars are very good for this. Red Leicesters. Something that melts nicely and crisps up on the top. So I'm just gonna make sure we get all the cheese off the plate. Quick tidy up, just have a quick look and make sure that you haven't got sauce up the edge of the dish. If you have, just get a damp kitchen, clean kitchen towel and just wipe the sides of the dish and you'll save yourself a lot of bother when you come to washing up. Let's pop this in the oven. You want 190 degrees centigrade, 170 in a fan oven or gas mark 5. I've just taken the cauliflower cheese out of the oven and it's lovely and brown and it's bubbling still. Leave it to stand a little bit because it's way too hot to serve and that will just really lift the aromas. And it smells absolutely fantastic. The nutmeg really lifts this dish, but that's an option. If you don't like nutmeg, then don't pop it in. You don't need to. I will show you a plated up version of the cauliflower cheese. I'm gonna plate it up with a couscous dish, and I'll show you that one in another video. So if you like my videos, please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll be seeing you.